Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. It's the 24th of September today and we're going to do a Bitcoin update video. So the big talking point on everyone's mind right now is how we're going to play going into this US election. The vertical line here early November is that US election time. Obviously not too long to go. So the big question is, are we going to rally into the election? Are we going to continue the sideways move or are we actually going to capitulate? So these are obviously always the three options in trading. I'm going to go through them all and give you my verdict on where I think price is heading. Um, there have been a lot of signs of recent based on high time frame closes. I'm going to run through those with you. We're going to be looking at the pitchforks, the Elliott wave and Camarilla pivots, as well as combining all that with time. OK, um, so let's just recap, first of all. So I'm not going to go too much into the high time frame targets up here. I've done that in previous videos. We're going to be focusing a little bit more on the lower time frames here because there's lots to talk about. But ultimately, I do feel like this eventual move into around 200K is certainly doable. Previously, I was thinking that kind of target could have happened before the election. Now it's not looking likely to occur that soon. Okay, just because of the length of the consolidation. There was a previous outlook that we had a three wave move down into here. Lots of confluence between the pitchforks with an opportunity to rally. But then obviously we've continued to consolidate that a little bit further. This is just more buying orders developing here, getting ready for the eventual move. So it's absolutely fine for it to last longer. It just means the upside target is going to be higher. Um, but yeah, initially we thought that maybe we might just rally from this low uh, which would have probably provided time to reach this potential trend line to the upside here. Okay, now that's kind of been put on hold a little bit, a little bit more consolidation. Now I'm thinking pre-election, there is the potential to reach 100k. Okay, so we're going to go into that in a moment. I think upside, that's as high as it probably can go pre-election. Okay, obviously that's not too far away. Um, and uh, so what is it six weeks or so away right now um so so it's a fast paced move it would need to be something like this this kind of an impulsive move to the upside which obviously bitcoin has done time and time again certainly think it's possible um so yeah that's the kind of upside scenario so let's just talk a little bit about the kind of the way things are moving up here so we're following the major pitchfork which is our first pivot second and third it's an original steep gradient pitchfork suggestive of impulsive price action so far all looking very impulsive that's looking impulsive that's corrective that's looking impulsive this is looking corrective and then we're waiting for the next impulse okay so the big question is this correction finished or does it want to go on longer now i know there are lots of other people out there talking about how this needs to consolidate for longer and um, they don't like the the look of this uh move up from the low here uh from an elliott wave perspective it looks like it's kind of gone up in a corrective fashion and therefore wants to come down so i am going to address the elliott wave scenario in this video because the key thing to note with elliott wave the higher time frame setup is always more important than the lower time frame price action. It always trumps the lower time frame Elliott wave scenario. So the question is, do we have a high time frame Elliott wave scenario that suggests that this consolidation is complete? And I've discussed this previously. I certainly think it's possible. I have the labeling for the scenario as a W, X, Y, X, Z. So we have a W, X, Y, X. Z. Okay. Previously, we were looking at the WXY. It decided to extend itself with another XZ, but shouldn't go on any longer than that. The other argument is, is it going to be a WXY where we just shift? Let's get rid of this WXYXZ just to demonstrate the other argument. So the WXY is a three wave W. We then have a joining X and then we have a, a three wave ish move to make a Y coming down here. Okay. So people will be looking out for this. It means taking out that low at 50k and I'm going to explain why this, in my opinion, is not possible. Okay, it is not possible. I mean, yes, of course, we can come beneath 50k, but if it comes beneath 50k, in my opinion, it's going to capitulate. It is not going to start bounce from 50k. Okay, if we come beneath 50k again, we're taking out this pitchfork lower warning line and we are going to capitulate at least to 30k. All right. So... I, in my opinion, I just don't see that happening. Okay, I believe this consolidation is complete, um, and we are setting up now 
Either we're going to just go sideways into the election, wait for the outcome and then decide what happens from there. Or we're going to rally. Depending on the outcome of the uh, election, we continue the rally or we go sideways and then rally a little bit later on. These are the scenarios that I'm looking at. Um, but regardless, as I say, I'm seeing strength here. I think at present the two clearly most likely scenarios are we either consolidate and go higher or we rally from here. And I'm going to explain of those two scenarios, I believe the most likely scenario is that the way things are setting up right now is that we're actually going to have a bit of a rally going into the election. OK, that's what I'm leaning towards right now. Um, so, yeah, this is the major pitchfork that we're looking at. This is the Yellow Wave scenario, the WXYXZ. That scenario is actually a lot more clear on the Bitcoin futures chart. If I just pull that up here, you can see the expanding megaphone pattern with the highs all following a trend line, the lows all following a nice trend line here. You can see the uh, the low of this consolidation hitting the high of the previous consolidation here. OK, so th so that's the higher time frame Elliott wave snow coming back to our main chart. So what I'm trying to say here that W X Y X Z scenario trumps anything on the lower time frame. So this consolidation that we're getting here, it doesn't matter if it looks corrective so many times Bitcoin has looked corrective on lower time frames and actually managed to rally as a result, confusing all of those Elliott wave traders. But just look at what's happened previously here. Very clear impulse correction, very clear flat pattern, double top, double bottom. There's your correction complete. If we were to overanalyze this and analyze this lower time frame Elliott wave scenario, not many people would have been long here. OK, but the point is the higher time frame outlooks had told you that we've had an impulse. We've had a correction. It completed here. So regardless of what price action is looking like here, it, there's every reason to be long because the higher time frame Elliott wave count trumps whatever's happening on these lower time frames here. If we just zoom in, let's zoom in on this bit of price action here going up here, you would have been concerned. Yeah, if you just kind of a laser focused on the lower time frames you look you see this it doesn't look impulsive lots of overlapping waves going up we correct and then okay that last leg looks a little bit more impulsive but so there we have a three wave move and then we overlap this high it's a concern it looks very three wave-ish you would have expected to continue the trend down probably take out that low that's if we focus on the lower time frame but as a result what happened it turned out we we'll probably just quickly look at it. Oh, it's a running flat impulse correction and we go to the upside. But if you really look at it on the lower time frames, you can't label that as a running flat. There's no impulse here. What are you going to say? It's a leading diagonal followed by a running flat. That's really forcing the Elliott wave scenario right there. Um, so as I say, what I'm trying to highlight here is very often you will get what looks like corrective price action from an Elliott wave perspective on the lower time frames and it will end up making you miss the move when really the most important thing is the fact that Elliott wave is still very valid here but you have to remember the higher time frame trumps the lower time frame so we have there the major flat pattern so regardless of what you're seeing here there's every reason to be long so with that said so Elliott wave obviously is important. It's, it doesn't rule the charts. It's one factor. There's lots of other things. Closing price action. Um, there's trends, as, a no, as you know, with uh, trend lines, with pitchforks. Um, there's obviously price action traders following horizontal levels. All of that. Very, very important also. So Elliott wave plays a big role. It's a very big uh, tool that's used by many traders, but it's not the the only way to analyze these markets and especially on the lower time frames there's lots of things that can play a role so that's one of the key things i want to stress in this video and now we can talk about this lower time frame price action because i must admit i would have preferred impulsive looking price action off of this low we haven't seen it no doubt that no there's no question there's no impulsive wave here yes you might want to try and force one but just be honest with yourself, it's a lot looking a lot more corrective to the upside. Let's zoom in. Let's go on the four hourly and look at it a bit closer. Yeah, you get this scenario where you've got clearly three waves up here. 
and then arguably that's a three a correction so it's a three a double three to the upside so there's every reason for it to come down and take out that low the other way some more complex Elioticians might look at this and say actually okay that is corrective and then we've come down this is just a truncation of this uh, of this uh, whole co uh, corrective sequence here so it was meant to come down here but it truncated and now we're going to fly to the upside okay that might be another way of analyzing it in my opinion just throw Elliott wave out of the window at this stage we've got our setup okay w x y x z as i said m much more clear on the bitcoin futures chart so we've got the elliott wave in okay don't overanalyze because as i said as i've given a, a clear example of previously how corrective act price action can all of a sudden turn into uh impulsive price action um so yeah and this sequence happens time and time again we you know we go up and then we pause and then we there's a we take out the uh, everyone with stops above here and then we take out everyone who's got stops beneath here and then we f a rip to the upside so where have we seen it before with the last with the previous bitcoin etf decision okay it was around here here's our consolidation we took out all the stops here with the upside move then we took out all the stops to the low at the bottom with the downside move yeah big liquidity run and then we absolutely fly okay so before we fly we have to take out all the stops to the upside all the stops to the downside and then we go and once it's done that it's ready to go okay um so again with the ethereum etf ethereum etf i believe was somewhere uh, around here the ethereum spot etf decision so here's your consolidation there's your rip to the upside it takes out all the stops up here all the stops beneath here needs to get taken out we've done that we're good to go okay don't overanalyze. we're good to go okay so this is just looking at it from a just a simple take a liquidity run point of view an elliott wave point of view uh we've looked at it from the trend point of view with the pitchfork we've looked at it from a time point of view the time is always important it gives you that extra pressure as to where the move is likely to uh to fly okay so because obviously there's the argument that we come down here and then we go up but that leaves very little time going into the election to actually make its move so this does kind of force it creates a deadline almost for things to actually materialize and start to move so yeah as i say we don't want to lose this pitchfork if we lose this lower warning line here it's looking very top heavy and as i say i would expect capitulation at least into the next major consolidation which is around around that 30k mark okay i don't think that is looking likely but if we lose our invalidation point which for me is yeah let's let's just call it that lower warning line so it's actually before taking out that low so if we lose this lower warning line that's that's a major warning sign for me now there is going to be those people that say hang on a minute we've been ranging here for a good while and we're just at range highs you don't want to go long at range highs well that's true because obviously we can just get rejected here and come all the way back down but and and there's always that risk you've got to obviously manage your risk and if there are signs of a bit of an impulse coming down on the lower time frames then fine we can uh, have a bit of caution there but the question is on the lower time frames are we getting impulsive to impulses to the downside or are we consolidating here at resistance getting ready to break it to the upside because when you are at range highs eventually that range high will break if we have that breakout to the upside okay so <clears throat> if you're going to wait for range highs to break you're going to have to be monitoring this chart very very closely okay uh because it will move up very fast once it breaks yeah simple as that um so now let's just look on the four hourly and we can just see what are we getting here are we getting capitulation off the highs so previous high we've not quite reached it you can argue uh, but we are certainly not seeing a rejection here we're actually building up a bit of a an order block here in my opinion getting ready to pierce through that level then once through it we can use it as support you know retest of the previous resistance flipping it into support and then we rally hard from there okay so that's just looking at it from a kind of price action point of view we've looked at it from an elliott wave and trend point of view now a very very important uh, uh, piece of information i want to throw in that i don't see enough traders talking about but it's hugely relevant i've spoken about it many many times before and it's our camarilla pivots so so important they're basically our high time frame closes 
okay and where a price closes relative to these horizontal levels of support and resistance tells you is the general sentiment in the market amongst high profile traders so let's just go on the uh, pull up the pivots and i'm gonna start on the monthly the highest time frame uh, that i believe is particularly uh important to analyze here so uh, and let's just take off everything else so the chart's nice and clean okay so for those of you that aren't familiar with Camarilla pivots you get your s1 s2 s3 s4 which is support s for support r1 2 3 and 4 which is for resistance the lines are based off of the okay first of all i should mention each period here depending on the time frame that you're on so we're on the monthly here this time frame it represents one year okay so this is the year 2024 okay so depending on what the previous year's range was from the major high to the major low will determine how far apart these lines are set okay and now i've only left on the r3 and r4 the s3 and s4 because they're the key levels okay the s1 s2 the r1 r2 not important okay really not important uh, so that's all i've left on the chart okay so what i want to demonstrate here is fantastic strength being demonstrated this year as you can see we have dipped as far as the r3 a wonderful support off of 50k and we absolutely flew to the upside and this close for august yeah previous month above the r4 at 57.8k was a vital piece of information vital okay it's a hammer candle hammering out a bottom in my opinion this is what is allowing us to push higher here it's another reason why i don't think we make another dip beneath 50k to make a more complex correction there's a couple of reasons for that obviously i've mentioned we'll be invalidating the pitchfork the high time frame pitchfork but also more importantly from the camera pivot point of view i mean you can argue we get another whip down beneath the r3 and then we manage to close the month of october back above the r4 but i just don't see that happening i don't i can't see us suddenly soaring to the downside and then back up i just do not see i know bitcoin can do some pretty quick moves but i don't believe it's going to be that quick um so very very unlikely for that scenario and as i said because of the pitch walk getting invalidated i just don't see it happening uh much more likely here we've got very good strength being demonstrated um here uh, with that previous candle closed the fact that it had that massive wick and managed to push above the r4 57.8k before closing was such a crucial piece of information right there uh, and just to demonstrate the how important these pitch rocks have been i've mentioned it in previous tweets but just look how they get tested so basically what you're looking at is how we close each period so here the previous year we finished above the r4 up here great strength so we can see look for continued strength sometimes you will dip into support but ultimately you want to see continued strength so um you know we can look back as far as all the way back here wonderful support of the s4 excellent next year was strong then this was the closing candle here for this year of 2019 as a result that's a little bit of weakness here failing to get through the r3 or failing to close above the r3 when we actually spent quite a lot of the year above the r3 well that was weakness as a result we went up initially but it was very likely to come down where did we come down to the s3 that's where we got support and it actually finished the year really really strong okay the subsequent year was a lot of consolidation in 2021 um okay i'm not going to go into too much of it here you can see 23 lots of consolidation finishing the year strong and expecting further strength this year okay but the the major thing i wanted to highlight here is august's close was crucial the monthly close of august that was the vital piece of information i can't stress it enough okay so that's the uh monthly now the weekly is not as useful to be honest the weekly basically it's giving you the same period one year okay yes you get a few closes beneath the r4 here which are a little bit concerning uh but as i say the monthly the higher time frame always trumps the lower time frame so the monthly trumps the weekly okay that's why we don't really need to use the weekly just as i'll show you in a moment the four hourly and the hourly uh, are both looking at the same time period which, uh, which represents a week um and it's the four hourly that would trump the hourly so 
okay the daily time frame is very important also because here it shows you a, a, a different range this is a monthly range okay it's another reason we're consolidating here you can argue it's uh, the range highs that we're testing another reason is that we're at, at the r3 you can see how we had a wonderful bit of support at the s3 we're now hitting the r3 uh, consolidating and it looks like we're consolidating that resistance getting ready to pierce through it okay it looks like it's going to be a very strong end to the month of september um Ultimately, to get an idea of who's winning here, bulls versus bears, we want to see a monthly close above 63.5k. Yeah, that's where our R3 sits. That would be a very successful finish to the month of September. Then, subsequent month of October, you'd be looking for maybe a bit of a test of the S3 for the month of uh, October and then to rally higher. Yeah, because as I say, we'd probably have broken out of the range by then, in which case we'd probably rally pretty hard. In fact, if we break out of this range um, before the end of September, then October, we might not even test the S3. We might just completely keep testing the upside, going into maybe the, the R4, then just pausing a little bit, uh, waiting for the election. Okay, so these are the scenarios that I'm looking at. Um, so yeah, very useful here, the daily also. Now, as we go down to lower time frames, are less important, but just give you a little bit of a hint as to what's happening. So four hourly, I'm going to show you here, four hourly and hourly time frames, they're looking at the weekly range. Yeah, so this is represents a week. Okay, uh, so the hourly also, yeah, it just represents a week. Okay, so I would generally use the four hourly. It's a bit more easier to analyze and uh, obviously... Uh, the four hourly closes are much more significant than the hourly closes. Yeah, it's a higher time frame. Higher time frame always trumps the lower time frame. So end of last week. So there's another reason for which for why I'm very bullish at the moment. Look how we finished the week. It was very close. Wonderful support of the S3. Bit of resistance to the R3. Pull back into the weekly open. The weekly open, by the way, is the halfway point between the R3 and S3. Yeah, you can see it's very clearly. It's about the halfway point right there. Um, so it's another reason camera pivots are very useful to use because they're showing you the the open for the week, the month, the day, uh, yeah, whichever time frame you're looking at. So yes, last week we f flew through the R4. Now there was every argument that we could come down here, but we actually, and this was during a lot of weekend price action. The end of this is including the weekend price action, and we managed to hold the R4. And that was crucial. That was really crucial right there. For me, that is demonstrating strength. And for me, it suggests that we are going to rip to the upside very soon. Yes, we could test the S3 before doing so at 61.7. But I just don't think that's likely. I think we're just testing the weekly open, as you can see, is around this point here. This is where we currently sit. I think we're getting very, very close to it shooting to the upside here. And that will take us through our range taking out the range and it could then very easily trend i'd be looking on the um the four hourly uh to test the four hourly r4 going into next week or maybe even the the, uh, the the on the daily time frame we can look for the uh the month of october r4 to get tested that's the kind of short-term targets but ultimately i think i believe we're going to see Potentially a very strong breakout pre-election could take us into 100k. So just zooming out, looking at that once more now. Into here. So I'm not having this ridiculous uh, outlook here saying that we're going to rally into this point here. Previously, I was thinking that's possible because of the length of the consolidation. I don't think that's likely. But I do think that run into here is doable. Okay. Not guaranteed. We might just test the previous high here. Yeah, which, you know, around 75K and then pause a little bit before deciding. That's certainly a scenario right there. But alts, I also, I expect altcoins to rip a lot harder now also. I think, especially looking at the Ethereum BTC chart, I believe we've found key support. Um, I cover that a lot more in my group, especially as well as the altcoin of greatest interest from my perspective. I cover that in more depth in my group on a weekly basis. We go through all of this in detail um but yeah i'm only going to focus on bitcoin here because as i say i've mentioned a lot there was a lot to discuss but yeah these are the kind of this is what i'm looking out for i'm just seeing lots and lots of strength i've gone into detail on all the key things that i like to analyze i don't use there's other indicators out there 
as I know, there's the, your momentum oscillators, you've got your volume profiles, you've got GAN. Uh, <clears throat> it, it goes on forever. Yeah, these are the kind of mainstream indicators. Now, the thing, that, the issue I have with volume and open interest and all of this is the, the data is not as pure as price and time. Okay, I focus on price and time because the information is pure. You can't kind of, um, you can't manipulate that. Okay, but volume and price action, uh, sorry, volume and uh, open interest, these kind of things, commitment of traders, etc. This kind of data can be manipulated because it's a it's a piece of the of the pie. It's not the full pie, and uh, as a result, it can be misleading. Volume can be hidden. Um, so yeah, I focus on the in these indicators, having experimented with all the others who are very long time, uh, and find this combination to be the most useful. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, so we're going to see how this plays out. It's going to be a very exciting time going into the election, no doubt. And yeah, let's see how things go. All right, take care. Thank you for your attention and watching through to the end of this video. Now, I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently. And I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason, I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. The Works consists of thorough and jargon-free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum, providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to The Works while subscribed. For more information on what's included in the works or cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again, and until next time, take care.